Hello everybody! Welcome! I'm excited to be here with you for another live video. We go live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. So um, we love to have you here live with us. You can chat with us, ask questions, give your comments and your two cents to all the topics that we share here on Real Healthy Mamas. So this week is, um, we're going to be talking about eight um, common reasons that are overlooked for why you might not be able to lose weight like you would like to. And this is a topic that I get really passionate about because there's so many people I know that struggle with weight loss. And so if that sounds like you, then this might be, um, this might be a helpful video for you. So um, say hi as you join so that I uh, know, uh, know that you're with me. Hi, Lionel. And um, let's, let's dive in. So, <clears throat> get my camera set up back up right there. So, if you don't know who I am, if this is your first time watching one of our videos for Real Healthy Mamas, um, my name's Heather Hall. And I'm a registered dietitian and a certified leaf therapist. And I'm a mama of four, soon to be five. And I love helping women that have autoimmune diseases and um, other health issues be able to um, help heal themselves and heal, them, heal their families using food as medicine because food is so powerful. Hey, Kelly. So let's talk about weight loss tonight. So if you are like a lot of people, um, in fact, most women in the United States, according to statistics, are on a diet more often than not. Um, and yet, um, you know, if diet work, if diets work, then why are we on them over and over again? And why are two thirds of us still overweight? Right? So obviously there's a disconnect somewhere there's a problem here somewhere because diets aren't working for us and so i'm excited to talk tonight about some of those reasons that i've personally noticed of why that is why diets aren't working um and maybe what you could do a little bit differently so i am um a functional dietitian right and so in functional medicine we're always looking to get at the heart of what's going on. So rather than just treating the surface symptoms, um, we're asking why. Why is this going wrong in the first place? And let's fix that. And so when it comes to weight loss, it's the same thing. We have to get at the root cause of why you're overweight. And the answer I can tell you right now is not as simple as you're eating more calories than you're burning. That's the big focus in the weight loss world, right? All of us, even the doctors and the dietitians and all of the experts that are supposed to um, know how to lose weight, we're all focusing on the wrong thing. It's always eat, eat less, exercise more, burn more calories. Um, don't eat as much, as much calories, right? Eat more, um, burn, or eat less, burn more calories is our focus. And so, um, I want to suggest to you that that is um, really kind of treating the surface symptoms and not getting at the root cause of what's really going on here. All right, so um, a lot of my clients and even family and friends will, you know, say things to me like, um, um, I've been, you know, I'm eating all of the right things and I can't lose weight or I have no self-control. I've never been able to stick with a diet for more than a few days or a few weeks or a few months, whatever it might be. Um, or I just can't lose more than X number of pounds, right? Um, and if you're like a lot of people that have been on several diets, um, the diets might work initially and then something happens and you fall off the wagon or whatever happens and eventually all that weight comes back. And if you've been on a lot of diets, what you might find nowadays is that diets don't even work anymore. Um, you can't lose weight at all. So I'm gonna explain some reasons of why that happens too. Um, and why dieting just kind of makes the problem worse a lot of times. So 
let's dive into a couple of reasons. So, um, one of the very first um, things that I noticed in working with clients, um, cause I don't see clients for weight loss. Um, if that's all that they're interested in is just weight loss, um, then I, I don't work with those people. I work with people that have autoimmune diseases or chronic diseases, polycystic ovarian syndrome or syndrome or endometriosis or, um, you know, low thyroid or skin issues or stuff like that. And we use food medicine for that. Um, but because two thirds of us are overweight, a lot of my clients are overweight as well. And weight loss is something that they're interested in. And so while we don't focus on weight loss, um, almost all of my clients lose weight in the course of our therapy. And one of the reasons is because you are not fat, you are inflamed. And this comes as a big surprise to people because they think a lot of that, you know, like the, the puffiness that they might have in their face or in their abdomen is fat, that they're carrying around a lot more fat than they really are. And it's actually that they're just really inflamed. So it's not uncommon when I work with people initially. Um, I work with food sensitivities a lot. When we eliminate their foods that are causing them to be inflamed, their sensitivities and things, um, it's not uncommon for them to lose 5, 10, 20, um, the record is 25 pounds in, in the course of just a few weeks because they are losing inflammation, basically. Um, and when you're inflamed, what you do is you, you retain um, water and then there's that puffiness of inflammation too. And so when that is gone, you'll shed a ton of water that um, is making you look fatter than you are. And um, a lot of that puffiness, you know, that comes with the inflammation. And so it's really common for people to lose a lot of weight in the first few weeks um, just by cutting inflammation. So that's the first thing. Um, it may not be that you are as fat as you think you are, you might just be inflamed. And if you have some sort of chronic disease or an autoimmune disease, um, you probably are inflamed. Um, okay, the second reason um, that I often see for why people are overweight and are not able to lose that weight is because their relationship with food is on the rocks. And um, nearly everybody I know, honestly, has a relationship with food that's a bit out of sorts, and it's just our culture um, and our diet mentality that we have in our culture and the fact that everybody's dieting um, and everybody's trying to lose weight and there's so many food rules out there and so many do's and don'ts with food and you're good if you eat this and you're bad if you don't eat that. And it totally messes with our relationship with food and it um, actually becomes really unhealthy. Um, so if you find yourself saying things like, I was good today because I ate this or I was bad today because I ate that, um, that's a sign that you've probably developed um, a not very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A not very beneficial or healthy relationship with food. And it's, re it's a really common um, attitude for us to have. It's almost a cultural thing um, here in America because so many of us are dieting, have been on diets, have picked up so many food rules, have, have taken the advice of this friend or that friend that read this article about that food. And um, we just have all of these ideas bouncing around in our heads so that pretty much no matter what you do with food, it's wrong according to somebody's rules. Um, and so once you've started to develop this kind of love-hate relationship with food um, and start equating yourself as good or bad according to what you eat, which food is not food is not um, a moral issue. It's not. You're not a good person or a bad person depending on what you choose to eat unless, of course, there's some sort of, you know, religious restrictions. Then it might be a, a moral issue, but... Um, what you choose to eat does not make you a good or bad person. So we've had a bunch of people jump on. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I've been busy talking, and I haven't said anything. But um, hi, Jim and Valerie and Emily and Jackie and Debbie and Tammy and Kenny and Tanya and Rachel. Thank you, everybody, for jumping on. I'm so glad that you're here with me. 
Um, so make sure you say hello when you jump on. That helps me to see who's joining me. Um, and so I'm waving at you all. You guys see me waving at you? There's this little button that says, oh, thanks, Valerie. Valerie says, wow, you look so beautiful. Pregnancy suits you well. Thank you. I don't always feel like that, so I definitely appreciate that. Um, hi, Debbie. So, yeah, thanks for joining. So we're talking about we're talking about weight loss and um, kind of different things that keep us from being able to lose weight. Some of the the root causes that are that we overlook when we're approaching weight loss. Um, and so, um, going back to our relationship with food, the problem with um, the problem with developing this mentality with, with all these food rules and starting to feel like no matter what we eat, we're doing something wrong, um, is that we, we stop enjoying food, we stop making rational choices about food, um, your food behaviors become impulsive and irrational, and um, you start to have these feelings like you can't control yourself around certain foods. So if this sounds like you to any degree, you are definitely in good company. Hi Shelby, thanks for joining. Hi, Jody. Thanks for joining. Um, and so it's it's a really common thing. So the remedy that I generally use when I'm approaching food relationships is something called intuitive eating. It's my favorite approach to fix your relationship with food. Um, it's been proven by science, and you, if you've been following us for any amount of time, you know I love um, science and research and anything that can be backed by that. And so intuitive eating has been backed by a lot of research and it's been proven more effective at long-term weight loss and at improving your body image than any diet out there. And so um, definitely look into intuitive eating. It's a type of mindful eating, but it's a very specific program that was created by a couple of brilliant dietitians um, several years ago. And uh, so definitely recommend looking into intuitive eating. There's a book on it. You can find intuitive eating certified counselors. Um, so yeah, it's, they have a website, intuitiveeating.org as well. Okay, so um, the third common reason that I see why people have trouble losing weight is that you've labeled yourself. And we all give ourselves labels and identities that makes us feel comfortable and secure, right? Um, we all identify with certain things, but sometimes our labels keep us stuck. And um, just as an example, I know of several um, larger men in my life that have labeled themselves as the big guy or the big eater or the overeater or that sort of thing. And they get comfortable with that label and their well-meaning friends will kind of egg on that behavior in public and, you know, always tell them, oh, that's all you're eating or, you know, just like encouraging that behavior of overeating or things like that. And they become comfortable and kind of stuck in that identity. And so, you know, especially in public situations, but even in private they have a hard time behaving differently because that's how they identify themselves. And so I would encourage you to take a really good look at how you label yourself. Um, do you call your, you know, do you consider yourself um, the chocolate lover or the large and in charge girl or the no, no self control girl or do you call yourself an emotional eater all the time? What labels are you giving yourself that's keeping you stuck in behaviors that aren't helpful? Um, and work on challenging those labels. Something that I think is a really good idea is to write a few um, affirmations or statements about yourself that kind of help you, um, kind of help to reinforce the behavior or the label that you would like to have for yourself. Um, and repeat those to yourself every, you know, every morning and night. Post them on your bathroom mirror, your fridge, or wherever you're going to see them 
often. Um, and anytime you're having, you know, one of those moments where you are labeling yourself negatively, use those statements to reinforce the positive. Affirmations can be really powerful. So um, that's kind of the, the remedy there for labeling ourselves. Okay, so I think we're on the fourth reason. The fourth reason that I see for why people are not able to lose weight, this is a big one, is that you are trying to beat your own biology. And if you do that, you will lose every time. So your body is programmed to survive and you have these powerful biological signals that govern your food um, and your hunger and your fullness and your cravings. And um, a lot of times dieting and our, you know, our current thoughts around weight loss um, encourages us to willpower our way through those impulses, to just ignore them. Um, you're weak if you can't ignore them. And we go in direct opposition to our biological programming. And um, it's not productive. You'll lose every time. They're too powerful. So what you need to do instead of going against um, your hunger and your cravings and that sort of thing is, is to understand them instead and to work with those biological signals. So, for example, um, a strategy for a lot of people is to skip breakfast and then to go as long as possible without eating between your meals, right? Because the, you know, the less often that you can eat throughout the day, the fewer calories you're going to take in and the better that's going to be for weight loss, right? This is a common strategy for people. Um, this is a bad idea for several reasons. So the first is that when you go into, when you do finally feed yourself, um, because you're ravenous, because you've gone as long as you possibly can without eating, you're going to first of all crave quick calories, um, meaning sugar, simple carbohydrates, you are going to make poor choices about food. It's going to be hard to be craving um, vegetables and healthy things when you're ravenous with hunger, right? Like who craves vegetables when you're super hungry? Um, and you are going to have a very difficult time stopping eating when you do finally allow yourself to eat. So hi, Noel. Thanks for joining. Um, so that's that's one of the reasons why it's a bad idea to try to go a long time between meals or put off eating as long as possible. Um, the other thing that's going to happen when you do that is it's actually going to slow your metabolism way, way down because your body has to learn how to make it for long stretches of time between meals, which means it has to learn how to burn as few calories as possible so you can survive. And so when you deny yourself regular meals, you are slowing down your metabolism potentially by a lot. Um, so that's one thing. Okay. Um, that's one of the reasons why as you do things like that, as you under eat, as you go a long time between meals, um, it becomes more and more difficult to lose weight from one diet to the next because your metabolism has slowed down so much that now it's even easier to overeat because you don't need as many calories as you used to. And so now to create a calorie deficit, um, you have to eat even less calories. So, um, it's just a, it's just a down, down, downward spiral. So don't do that. Okay. Another way that we try to beat biology is by eating way more sugar and simple carbohydrates than your body is really programmed to be able to handle. So if you think about our ancestors and the way that they ate, they ate hardly any sugar. Um, if they did, it was like maybe a tablespoon or two of honey a day when it was in season. Um, and hi, El Elik. I'm not sure how to say that name, but thanks for joining. So, um, they just were not used to eating the amount of simple carbohydrates and refined sugars that we do. What this does is that it causes, um, your, your body doesn't have to do any digesting or anything to be able to absorb those sugars into your blood. So they're absorbed really quickly. It 
makes your blood sugar levels spike, um, which will be followed by, to keep it simple, a sugar crash um, soon thereafter. So your body will overcompensate like, whoa, or, you know, these blood sugars are super high. We got to release lots of insulin. We got to get these sugars down. It'll overcompensate because it's not programmed. We're not programmed to eat like that. Um, and your blood sugars will take a dive. So you'll end up with a blood sugar low, not, not long later. And this might be why you, some of you feel hungry again. Um, when it's only been an hour or two since your last meal is maybe because it was a meal that was too high in sugars and refined carbohydrates. So I call this riding the blood sugar roller coaster. And um, there's, there's a couple ways to deal with this. I'm trying to think of how much, how much detail to go into first here on this video. But um, if you go to realhealthymamas.com, read our read our blog about um, eight overlooked reasons why you can't lose weight. I'll go into some detail there, but um, also you want to check out, go to realhealthymoms.com and check out the blood sugar roller coaster post that we have there. That'll give you lots of good tools to be able to deal with um, leveling out those blood sugars and keeping your your fullness and your hunger signals even and preventing a lot of different um, problems that eating that way causes. So um, that's kind of a big a big topic to cover, cover, so I'm gonna send you there for some ideas on how to prevent the blood sugar roller coaster from happening. Um, and you're probably on the blood sugar roller coaster, most of us are, we have um, no idea how much sugar and refined carbohydrates that we're eating a day. Even if you think you're eating pretty healthy, you're probably not doing quite as well as you think you are is what I find from with most people. Um, and so anyway, check out those posts at realhealthymamas.com. Go to our blog. Okay. The fifth reason, I think we're on our fifth reason here, of why you might be struggling to lose weight, one of the root causes behind weight loss, is that your hormones are wacky. So it's a common problem that I've seen among women is that our hormones are just all messed up these days. And um, there's a lot of reasons why. So the last thing that we talked about, crazy blood sugars, that'll mess up your hormones. Birth controls and a lot of medications will mess up your hormones. Um, a lot of the chemicals that are found in our food and our air and our plastics and our lotions and our perfumes, house cleaners, um, pesticides, and more are called endocrine disruptors. Those mess with our hormones. Poor diet will mess with your hormones. Um, a nutrient-rich diet, on the other hand, is going to help your body to get rid of those endocrine disrupting chemicals. You're going to be exposed to um, you know, some of them, no matter what we can try to clean up our, um, what we're using on our skin and what we're using to clean our house and all of that. And that's all great, but there's others that you're just not going to be able to avoid. It's just modern living. Um, and so eating a really nutrient dense diet is going to help your body to be able to handle all of those endocrine disrupting chemicals that are messing up your hormones and a lot of other stuff. So, um, and then a good diet's also going to balance those blood sugars that we talked about a second ago that are throwing your hormones off as well. So it's nice because all of this stuff comes full circle. Um, it, when you do one positive thing for your health, you're usually doing, you're affecting a lot of other areas as well, which is what I love about functional medicine. Hi, Carla. Thanks for joining. Um, anyway, so wacky hormones. We have to get those hormones balanced, ladies, or no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to lose weight. Um, how do you know if your hormones are crazy? I'll give you a couple of ideas for some of the dead giveaways. So if you have like PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, if you have endometriosis, diabetes, if you have really painful or heavy periods or irregular periods, lots of PMS symptoms or menopause symptoms. Um, those are all signs that your hormones are a little out of control and that you could benefit some, from some hormone balancing. But even if you don't have any of those really obvious symptoms, um, you know, like sleep disturbances, like if you have a really hard time with your sleep, it could be hormones. Um, there's a lot of things that hormones will mess with. So 
if you're having any sort of issues, there's a good chance that your hormones are, um, are out of whack too, just because a lot of these things go hand in hand. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining. Okay. So the first step to getting your hormones right is getting your diet right. And I give all sorts of advice on this. Um, Kelly and I share a lot of stuff on our Facebook page and in our blogs at realhealthymamas.com. Um, so definitely check out all that stuff because I'm not going to go into a full, a full, you know, diet review right now. But just know to get your hormones right, the first step is get your diet right. Okay, lots of fruits and veggies, very little sugar will make a big difference in helping with your hormones. Um, there's a blog post, Five Tools to Battle the Modern Plagues of Obesity and Chronic Disease on our blog. That'd be a really good one to check out if you're interested in this. Hi, Michael. Thanks for joining. Um, and so um, I also have another one called Overfed and Undernourished on the blog. It's another great resource. So um, check, check out those things. Okay. Um, and then another really easy place to start with diet is if you go to realhealthymamas.com right there on the home page. We have a four-week, family-friendly, free meal plan. So it's all 30-minute or less meals that are quick and healthy and that tend to be kid-friendly. And so that's a really good place to start if you're trying to figure out how to clean up your diet. I know it's overwhelming. It can be super overwhelming to think about trying to change how you eat. So it's a really good way to start. Um... There's also a lot of supplements and essential oils that you can use to balance hormones if you feel like that's an issue for you. Um, even if you're not sure if it's an issue, it's usually a um, pretty safe place to check into. So um, I would recommend going to avivaram.com. She is a doctor with lots of great ideas for women's health and natural, um, natural remedies, basically, for balancing hormones and things. So check out avivaram.com. I love the stuff that she puts out. Um, okay, the next reason, I think we're on reason number six of why you might be struggling to lose weight is because um, you're focused on quantity and not quality. So common advice from a lot of our weight loss experts and weight loss articles and weight loss programs, um, even dietitians like me, is that you need to eat fewer calories and you got to exercise more. Um, that's how you're going to lose weight. And in theory, that's really sound advice, right? But in practice, that becomes kind of problematic. So my observation has been that our hyper focus on eating less and exercising more pretty much leads to food obsession, a hate for exercise, a low body image, low... Um, Low opinions of ourselves. Everyone starts labeling themselves as undisciplined because um, of all of these things that we've been talking about. Hi, Christian. And um, and a hate for exercise. You like it's um, and an inability to stick with it. We it's mentally and you know physically we just revolt against all of these rules, and then we think that we've done something wrong. So um, another problem is that when we focus on eating less, burning more, it puts the focus on weight loss rather than on health, which is really the reason we're trying to lose weight in the first place, right? We want to be healthier and we want to be happier. And we think that if we lose weight, that that will, that will um, help us accomplish that. But this weight-focused approach is a really poor long-term motivator, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and so instead of focusing on the quantity of food that you're eating, how many calories that you're getting in, how much food and portion sizes and all of that stuff, um, focus on quality of what you're eating. How many nutrients is that food providing you? How dark and rich is the color? How many additives is it? How, how does it have in it? How processed is it? Um, Focus on the quality of the food that you're eating. Focus on eating real food with few additives, with as little processing as possible. Can you recognize where that food came from? Is it dark and rich in color? Um, 
you know, things like that. Get get yourself in some really good quality food um, and stop focusing so much on quantity, portion sizes, calorie counting, all of that garbage. Um, how many calories that you're burning with every minute of exercise and if you do this exercise versus that exercise. So, hey Elizabeth, thanks for watching. Um, that is one of the most helpful shifts that you can make in your thinking. If you are doing this for health, it is a far better long-term motivator. Um, so focus on nourishing your body. Um, let's see. The, what are we on? Seven? The seventh reason? Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the rewards here. So... You might be focused on external and not internal rewards. And this links back to what we were just talking about. So if the focus of your weight loss is how you look or what others are saying about you or what others think about you or trying to make somebody else happy or reaching a specific number on that scale or a certain pant size or other external factors, um, that focus might be part of the problem. So these are called extrinsic motivators and they're actually really poor long-term motivators. You might think, yes, losing weight or pleasing my husband or whatever is a good long-term motivator, but it's not. Um, because this type of thinking tends to come from a, um, it, it relies on factors outside of yourself, things that you cannot control. So if you can instead shift your focus to intrinsic motivators, like how much energy do you have? Um, how do you feel about the choices that you're making? How well are you nourishing your body? What are you doing for your health long term? Um, factors that are independent of somebody else's praise or opinion or numbers on a scale or size of clothing. Um, that type of thinking tends to come from a place of self-love self-respect, um, which are both feelings that diets tend to diminish, by the way, and they are powerful long-term motivators. So the reasons for the choices that you make daily will begin to come from this strong place within that nobody can touch. Um, it doesn't matter what the scale says that day. It doesn't matter if your pants are tight or not. It doesn't matter um, what other people are saying or how they're treating you. Your choices are coming from a strong place within that nobody can touch. And those are called intrinsic motivators. So if you can work on shifting your motivation to those intrinsic factors instead, then that is where you're going to really start to gain some traction and some long-term success with your, with, with your weight loss approaches. Um, you know, and combining all of these things that we've been talking about with those intrinsic motivators is going to be really powerful. Okay, and I think we're on the eighth and final reason here. Yes. Okay, so the final reason that I often see for why people struggle to lose weight is that your goals are far-fetched. And I know you don't want to hear that. Um but your weight goal might just be unrealistic. So take an honest look at what you think you should look like and what it would take for you to maintain that weight long term. And is it going to be worth it? Um, deep down, all of us think that if we lose weight, we're going to be happier, right? That's the whole reason that we even attempted in the first place. Hey, Jennifer, thanks for joining. And so... Um, think about the type of lifestyle you would have to maintain um, to be at that goal weight long term. And is that going to make you happy? So if you are so focused on achieving a weight that is so low that it's going to require a lifetime of under eating and over exercising and obsessing over every calorie that you put into your mouth, is that what happiness looks like for you? So just take an honest look at that. Um, it's probably not. So you might argue, but I was super skinny when I was a teenager and when I was a young adult. Yeah, you might have been, but you're a full-grown woman now. You've had babies 
uh, your body has done amazing things and guess what? It's had to go through some changes to be able to do those things. Um, and that's okay. To me, you are beautiful for those extra curves and those scars that you've had um, to be able to have those babies and the changes that your body is going to have to, you know, keep in order to be a woman that is full grown and fully developed and that has done those things. And your body is amazing. So focus on those amazing things that your body has done um, instead of trying to um, continually reach some phantom weight. So just take a really realistic look at what your weight goals are and, um, and what happiness looks like for you and if those two things are in conflict with each other. Hi, Justin. Thanks for watching. So Kelly's giving me a heart, uh, high fives and, and hearts. Thanks. I love the encouragement. Okay. So, um, another thing that you might have to do, stop looking at those Pinterest images of those models and the models on the magazine covers, um, and the, those girls in the scantily clad workout videos. I know we're telling you to work out and to exercise and that it's good for your body, um, but you're not going to be teaching five, most likely, unless you happen to be a gym teacher, you know, a, a workout instructor, you're not going to be teaching five classes a day. You're going to be exercising all day long. Um, you're not going to have professional photography and professional wardrobes and um, photoshopping and makeup tricks to make you look like the people in those pictures look. So stop trying to look like those people and look at the people around you. We're real women here. Most of us don't look like that. And so sometimes it might just be that we need to take our eyes off of those um, Pinterest perfect models and magazine covers and um, scantily clad <laughs> fitness instructors and focus on what real women look like and stop holding ourselves to that standard. Um, yeah, Kelly's saying, even if you teach five classes a day, you don't look like that. Most people don't. You know, there's those few people out there that do have that genetic makeup and they do look like that. Or there's those few people out there that where that really is super important to them and they work hard at it. And that is happiness for them. Um, to work out a whole bunch and to eat super healthy all the time. But for most of us, that's not real life for us. That's not happiness for us. It's not going to be consistent for us. And so stop holding yourself to that standard. Um, so all of this is not to say that some, you know, that weight loss might not be warranted and that some weight loss, weight loss isn't going to be good for your health or that it might not make you happier with yourself. Um, the key is to change how we are approaching it. So taking this approach is going to take longer. Um, it's then just, you know, doing some quick diet, being able to lose 10 pounds for a couple of weeks and then gain it back. And um, that's shown to be more dangerous for our health. It's shown to be less effective over time. You're more likely to end up heavier 10 years from now if you keep taking the diet approach then if you finally dig your heels in and say, I'm done with dieting and I'm going to make some real lifestyle changes, I'm going to follow these suggestions that Heather is sharing with me, I'm going to go read that blog and I'm going to do something real about this. Um, you're going to see slower progress that way, but you're going to see permanent progress um, and you're going to be happier with yourself. So that's my goal for, for all of you is to be able to find... Um, health and happiness to a greater degree than you've ever seen it um, in the past this year just by making simple small changes and I know you can do this so if you want to know more go to realhealthymamas.com we got lots of great free information there on our blog a free meal plan to help you get started um and yeah so be sure to leave us comments, questions, that sort of thing. We'll make sure we're checking this feed and answering those as best we can. So thanks for joining, and we will talk to you on our next video.